Good morning, friends. Today we're going to finish the book. When I left you off on Friday, um, Roxy was with Gib and Rainy and Ash. And Ash, or sorry, Gib and Rainy were holding her hand. Rainy let go of her hand to pay for the caramel apple. And she slipped out of Gib's grip. Um, and just as that happened, the dog ran right between them. So I'm going to pick up from there. The dog ran right between us, panting and wild-eyed, his fur brushing our shins. Now that I saw him up close, he looked lost and confused, and I was glad I'd stopped myself from hitting him with rocks in front of our house. Oh, poor doggy, you need help, cried Roxy, grinning like a maniac. Before I could stop her, she was gone. I ran after her, dodging mothers with strollers and bumping into people. Everything I saw was clouded by despair, and I thought maybe some events were small, like pebbles in a river. You could pick them up and toss them away without much trouble. But other events were like boulders that stuck up high and were so huge <clears throat> and heavy that the water of time changed course to flow around them, and they were nearly impossible to move. Maybe this moment was just too massive to erase. Maybe the best I could hope for was to shift it ever so slightly. Thanks to the owner, there were now three of us trying to move that boulder, though Rainy didn't know that's what she was doing. She, Ash, and I sped through the carnival like crazy heroes in a comic book no one's ever heard of. Stop that little girl, Ash yelled, turning heads as he ran past, but nobody moved to help us. Roxy, stop! Lorraine cried a few steps behind him. Stop, Roxy, I shrieked, but she ran on as if she hadn't heard. Not knowing what else to do, I shouted at the dog. Stop, you doofus mutt! The dog turned and looked at me for about half a second and then took off again. By the time we reached the curb, Roxy was on, almost on top of the dog, I was almost on top of her, and La Ash and Rainy were almost on top of me. Ash and Rainy lunged toward Roxy and the dog at the same time. I remember thinking I couldn't let it happen. We were all going to end up in the street unless I stopped us somehow. With one last desperate push, I leaped harder and farther than any of the others. Ash, Rainy, Roxy, and the dog piled into me, pushing me over the curb. I thought as I watched the wheels of the truck spin toward me, that even if it wasn't the best possible ending, it was all right. Better me than my sister or my friends. So, chapter 13, thoughts about the universe. You know I didn't die, otherwise I wouldn't be telling this story. I can't remember much about what happened next, but Ash and Rainey told me later that I did a somersault into the street the truck flying toward me, its tires smoking like something straight from the underworld. It almost stopped in time, which is how I happened to, excuse me, my nose is so runny today, which is how I happened to be telling you this story while lying here on a cot under the autumn stars, suffering nothing worse than a badly broken leg. Some people think it's terribly unfair what happened to me, like a punishment I don't deserve. Poor Gib. I heard one of our neighbors say to another when she thought no one else was listening. It's so awful. All that pain, all those surgeries, and even so, he'll never be able to run with the other kids again. Others, including my parents, think I'm a hero because I kept Ash and Roxy and Rainy from ending up under the truck too. They see it as bravery and incredibly, incredible luck. But I wasn't feeling brave at the time. In fact, I was scared out of my mind. I'm not very comfortable talking about luck anymore, and I'm not sure I ever really believed bad things happen because people deserve them. I definitely don't believe that now. I think it's something else, something more like balance or lessons we need to learn but can't any other way, which is kind of spooky too, because if things happen so we can learn stuff from them, that means there must be a big teacher out there somewhere thinking up major lesson plans. I did learn something, though it's awfully hard to put into words. 
and I know I made some kind of bargain so things would turn out the way they did. I'm just not sure what it is yet. I have a few clues though. The doctor says I'll probably have a bad limp for the rest of my life, which pretty much answers the main question about the old guy in the woods. The stranger who knew way more than he possibly could have about my private life and who walked with a f really bad limp. Ash was right. He had to be me. Funny how you're always the last person to recognize yourself. My mom signed up for a high-tech grocery delivery service, and they gave her a special little terminal to plug into our home computer. Something about it seemed familiar, and when I looked closely, I saw what it was. It had a big red button that said order. I opened the cigar box where I've been keeping the remains of the unner and discovered the order button was missing. But now I know where to find it when the time comes. The thing that totally convinced me of old Gibbs' true identity, though, was the dog. I was wondering if any of you guys were going to catch this. There's two clues in the book before we get here. Roxy refused to let go of that crazy stray, even after the paramedics had rushed me away, and Ash and Rainey and the policemen were left trying to figure out what to do with her. So the dog came to live at our house, temporarily. Mom and Dad put an ad in the newspaper describing it and asking its owners to phone, but nobody ever called. Roxy was ecstatic because the deal was that if we didn't get an answer within two weeks, she could keep the dog. I can name him now, right? She said yesterday, clasping her hands together, jumping up and down. I smiled at her thinking I'd never, ever have to play doggy again. Dad said yes, she could give the dog a name. He and mom had been strict about it, insisting that we couldn't name him until we were sure he was ours. So we'd just been calling him mutt or dog or boy. Roxy stared at him so hard she actually held still for maybe two seconds. Then she shouted, I've got it. I know his name. Doofus. Mom frowned and said, Roxy, that's not very nice. How would you like to be called Doofus? Roxy pursed her lips and lifted her nose. I'd be proud to be named Doofus considering. Considering what, said Mom. Gib called him Doofus Mutt when we were all chasing him. And it must have been the right name because Doofus stopped and looked right at Gib. He really did. No fooling. Doofus, said Dad. Doofus, said Mom. They looked at each other and shook their heads. But I was grinning because I finally understood why the old man had asked how Doofus was. Do you remember that part? The first time the old man saw Gib in the woods, he said, Hey, how's Doofus? And they said, Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> We had no dog named Doofus yet, but he knew there was one waiting in our near future. And judging from the way he asked, sorry, my throat is like killing me today. I hope I'm not getting sick sick. Doofus mattered as much to him as he already does to me. The only reasonable conclusion is that I have a busy and exciting life. Think about it. I'm going to have to invent both the unner and some method of time travel that'll make it possible for me to deliver it to my younger self. And when I do, I'm going to be in a hurry. Otherwise, why would I forget the zero? And why would I always have to leave myself in the woods too soon? The really big question is why I would be in a hurry. If I can travel in time, then I should have all the time in the world. It gives me the shivers to think about it, but there's only one answer. I keep remembering how slowly old Gib moved and how easily he got tired. I must be so old that I'm dying when I solve the problem of time travel. It makes me want to get started right away. I've still got plenty of unanswered questions. I wish I knew exactly what old Gib meant when he said I'm important in the world, and so is Roxy. I'm guessing that at some point in the future, Roxy and I will have to do some big or little thing that makes a bunch of other things happen. And in the end, whatever those things are, they're important in some mysterious way we won't understand till we get there. All I know for sure, though, is that sometimes what seems bad is actually not so bad at all, after all. And what seems good might not be when you see the big picture. 
Maybe bad things happen because without them, we wouldn't recognize the good things. Maybe there's some law like conservation of motion, and for every good thing, there has to be an equal and opposite bad thing. Take Ash winning that plane, for example. The day after the carnival, he took it over to the park, started it up, and flew it straight into a tree. Turns out it was a piece of junk and the controllers didn't work. Ultimately, winning it made him just as mad and disappointed as not winning it. But then who knows which of us would have wound up under the truck if I hadn't used the unner to help him win. There's just no way to tell. It's all incredibly complicated. I've been lying here worrying a lot about whether I mess things up royally by first inventing and then using the unner. Suppose there really is somebody in charge, somebody who has or had a perfectly balanced plan. Did my using the unner change it? Or was the unner part of the plan in the first place? I hope in the end, unning what happened to Roxy was the best, because it'll be a long time before I know for sure, if I ever do, and even longer before I have the power of un again. If Madam Isis were here, I'd ask her, I'd ask her if I did the right thing. But she isn't, and maybe it's just as well. Even if she knows bits and pieces of the future, how could she answer a question like that? How could anybody? <clears throat> Nobody is out here now except me and the stars and doofus scratching at a flea. But I think I hear Ash's voice in the house. And maybe Rainy's too. Ooh, excuse me. They said they'd come over tonight so we could watch some movies together. I hope we choose the right ones. <laughs> and that's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed it.